Hello, this video is what I think about the comet Elenin. I only found out about it uh, a couple weeks ago and my mom's like, yeah, Elenin. Um, stay away from the coasts on these days. I think she even wanted me to go back, visit for those days. So then I uh, looked it up and um, yeah, it's this, uh, co this commonly known comet that's coming towards the Earth. I don't know anything about the actual comet like how big NASA says it is and stuff. Um, my mom said like she heard it was like, her brother told her it was like three times the size of the Earth or something. Um, I mean, I wouldn't trust the government, NASA to tell you how, I mean, if it was that big, I wouldn't trust them to tell us that. People might freak out. But um, and some people think it's like a dwarf star. Um, so I don't know. Personally, if there's this big comet coming through that uh, either they happen a lot and we just have these comets in our solar system or uh, I would say I would have my, my idea is that Ellen and Comet is a um, is one of these big alien spacecraft coming in to uh, assist us in the ascension <laughs> to place their alien spacecraft in proximity to the earth at certain times to cause to um, act as a chiropractor for the Earth, um, so that the Earth uh, has the earthquakes and um, volcanoes in increments, in regular increments, instead of instead of like holding on to it, holding on to it, and then finally exploding and then killing a whole bunch more people. Um, but um, yeah, the idea is that if if comets come in to your solar system and then uh, align themselves with um, you or a planet and the sun, it makes a straight line and it affects the gravity. And so its gravitational pull, you know, would alleviate the normal gravitational pull if it's on the outside of your planet and could cause some shakeups and breakups within the Earth, natural catastrophes. Um, and if it's on the inside, I would imagine it would even cause more because it, uh, it's, it's, it's increasing the gravity that the sun's already pulling on the earth and uh, going to cause some big stuff. Um, we all know what the moon does, causes the tides, we never knew that before. And, um, but it, you know, it, it goes on uh, um, in astrology as well, not just gravitationally but energy wise, energy zapping through. Because energy comes out of our sun. Um, and if the planet's in between, it could come out through our sun, hit the planet, and then the planet could act as like a, um, a transmitter for that energy, and then it hit us. So the energy would come even stronger than if the planet wasn't there. And um, so maybe the aliens are going to place their planet between them and us on a certain specific day where the sun's already having big Earth flares. And it's, or, or, or maybe a specific day where the sun's not having Earth, big Earth flares or something to cause these um, natural catastrophes. That's what I think. I think it's a big old spaceship, hollowed out planet used as a spaceship. But I saw this video, and I'll put the link on the bottom of the video page, um, of this dude who um, you can get on the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory website and you can scroll uh, as this comet comes in. It's going to come in within our, our, our orbit and then leave again and we'll never see it again. And it's been coming and this guy gave some dates and it's really interesting because um, the alignment of the comet with the Earth, you can there's this big yellow line that you can and I don't know why the NASA actually put that big yellow line there for us all to look at. It's kind of interesting because NASA's mainstream, like, why would they care to put a big yellow line to help us show when the comet, the Earth, and the Sun are all in alignment? Um, but, uh, and, and also, why did NASA call it Elenin? E-L-E, Extinction Level Event. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, dude, NASA's just trying to tell us stuff 
um, but only the people who pay attention so that on those special days you can get out of away from the sea line away from the volcanoes away from where there would be even um, uh, tornadoes um, just you know stock up for those specific days um, yeah it's kind of like the, uh, the the Denver International Airport where they use those paint those big murals of Armageddon with uh, volcanoes and earthquakes and people dying to try to warn us that they think they know what's gonna happen but this guy showed, and he showed it scrolling on the, the, the website, that you can go to yourself. He didn't provide the link on his page, and I did manage to actually find it. Um, so, and I gave up digging around. I don't need to see it, because he did all the scrolling himself. So he scrolled it to September 4th, 2010, which was the first of five alignments that it's going to be in with our planet before it zooms off, at least in the, uh, when it's within the proximation of our orbit. And um, that was the day, the exact day, according to this guy, of the 7.2 earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand. So every time, is, is that to lead us to believe that every time the comet comes into alignment with the Earth, there's an earthquake? Well, the second time it came into alignment, because it comes into alignment because it's got this really slow orbit coming in, right? And that was at like 6 AU, I think, right? Six, six times farther from the sun than the Earth, or the diameter of this Earth's orbit. So the Earth goes around like this. Well, actually, it's not going around that fast, but the Earth is kind of going like this. And then, and then, um, well, you can see if you go to that website. But, um, well, at least it'll go around once more. It'll go around one whole revolution until the last alignment because the Earth goes around. Maybe the, Earth, the Elenin's coming around this side and up opposite to the rotation of the Earth. So that's why there's so many alignments. So there's like one here and then it comes around and then there's another one on the other side and then it comes around another alignment. So anyways, that was the first alignment. But he showed the second alignment was on February 27th of this year, or of last year, 2010. And um, that was at 6 AU, and that was the exact day of that 8.8 .8 earthquake in Chile, which was the biggest earthquake in Chile ever. And it killed hundreds of people and destroyed Valparaiso and Vino del Mar um, with, the, with the tsunami and the earthquake. And that was the same day. So there's two, two for two out of five. Well, the next alignment was on the fifth, was on the 15th of, um, of March of this year, just like uh, three weeks at, uh, a year and three weeks after that other one. Yeah, yeah, because we're, we're talking to like a year of two years, so you know, the alignment's coming. And um, that was only at 2.1 AU, which is three times closer. And you'd think when, it, when it's closer to a, the Earth, the gravitational field is going to be even stronger. Um, well, and that was the day that this guy made the video as well. Well, nothing happened on that day, but four days before that alignment, on the 11th of March, was that Japan earthquake, which caused the biggest natural catastrophe I've ever seen. I saw the, uh, the video of the um, tsunami going and gobbling up an entire town, cities and everything. It was crazy, and then the waves going over putting ships into the way into inland and causing a uh, nuclear fallout. My God, that was like the worst ever. Anyways, that was three days, four days before the alignment. So now we're three, three for three, pretty much. So I bet by now everybody's ears are perking and you're thinking, well, when's the next alignment? The next alignment is, drum roll, September 26th, 2011. So, if we were to believe all this stuff on September 26, 2011, now get this, Elenin is going to be inside of our, of our Earth's orbit, and it's only going to be 0.4 AU. So that's, um, that's like five times closer than, than in the Japan earthquake, 
which was three times closer than the Chile earthquake. The Japan earthquake was way worse than the Chile earthquake, at least I think, caused way more damage. And so now we're going even five times closer and it's gonna be on the inside of our orbit. You'd think like um, increasing the uh, gravity a lot. So if we're gonna look at this scientifically, our extinction level event is on September 26. So um, I think on September 20th, I'm gonna upload a video and say, brace yourselves, get yourselves away from uh, fault zones, away from Mount Rainier, away from this ocean, away from the fault zone and um, San Andreas Fault, away from the fault zone and uh, New Orleans, um, and even where there could be tornadoes. Um, yeah. And if nothing happens there, if something happens there, people's ears are gonna prick up. And I'm really excited about this because, I mean, I'd, I'd be sad if people died, but. If there was a natural catastrophe on or near the 26th, maybe four days before, between the 20th and the 30th of the last 10 days of September, then, oh my God, that confirms everything. That confirms NASA cover-up because they never said anything. It confirms um, national news um, retardedness, incompetence, ignorance for not mentioning at all, because no national news or big news has ever mentioned Elenin so far. So I haven't seen it on Yahoo News and people have saying that, that they're not gonna say it. it. It confirms, yeah, cover up of NASA, but it also confirms that they know what's going on because they called it Elenin. They called it extinction level event themselves and they didn't tell anybody. So if that's true, then, you know, FEMA camp or whatever, big tunnels to save from a 20, 12 catastrophe being dug under DIA, Denver International Airport, could be true. The, the murder of John F. Kennedy is true. Aliens on Mars is true. It kind of lets, lets the cat out of the bag. It, uh, it's, it's a Pandora's box phenomenon. Well, if nothing big, ha nothing happens that day, there are some other dates this guy mentioned. On, the seven, on October 17th, Elenin comes the closest to the Earth. Which means something because uh, that you know it's gonna that's what's gonna have its its own particular tug on the Earth. It's it's itself. Um, so um, I would say personally that um, October seventeenth is more is it's gonna be more likely to have a big date than September twenty sixth, or maybe September twenty sixth will prime for this big October seventeenth, and then another one. It comes close to again to us, only 3.8 AUs on the um, November 5th, and that's actually in the same valency level as our uh, Earth's uh, rotation. It's the same line, the same distance from the Sun as our Earth, which is in itself is an energetic nodal point. The Earth is revolves around the Sun at a certain distance, kind of like um, grooves in a, in a record. It kind of sits there and goes around. It's this invisible force field that holds us in place. Um, that's why each each planet you go out, it's it's exactly one and a half times farther. It, it follows the sacred pattern of the uh, golden mean spiral, going one and far out, 1.6. Yeah, one and a half times out each time. So, um, so and then. Um, there's another alignment on the 23rd of October of this year at 0.6 AU, which is really close. So big, big, big dates to look for. 26, and I'll, I'll put this on my comment field, but 26th of, of September of this year, 17th of October this year, 5th of November this year, and then the 23rd of November this year. So, you know, or maybe, maybe it'll be like right around the turn of the year after all this stuff is gonna come up. So let's see, man, let's see. And if nothing happens, if nothing at all happens, then it's then it's like um, maybe we should reevaluate all of our um, doomsday prophecy. <laughs> or I guess we'll wait until 2012 and if nothing happens then. But, but I mean, scientifically, it's extremely interesting that the 7.2 quake happened on the exact day of the alignment. The earthquake in Chile happened on the exact day. According to this guy, I didn't actually do the uh, research myself. I'm going to do the research after the video, I just forgot. And then 
the uh, Japan quake happens four days before the alignment. Oh my god. So let's see what happens. 